Did you know that animals see the world differently from us? Take this. Pigeons actually have better vision than humans. Crazy, right? So let's try to see the world from the animal's eyes. Let's start with snakes. Their way of seeing the world is totally different from ours. They have special infrared sensitive receptors in their snouts. This allows them to see the radiated heat of warm blooded mammals. Now let's move on to cows. These big guys don't see colors as well as humans do. They can't see the color red because they don't have the necessary receptors in their retinas for that. So they only perceive variations of blue and green. Also, they don't like it when someone approaches them from behind. They have a near panoramic vision and the only area they can't see is directly to the back. So if you're ever sneaking up on a cow, make sure you give them a heads up. Horses have a blind spot right in front of their faces because of their eye placement. This means they can't see things directly in front of them. Also, they don't see as many colors as we do. Just like cows, their world is mostly made up of greens, yellows, and blues. Poor guys. Fish eyes have ultraviolet receptors and a more spherical lens than humans. This gives them an almost 360 degree vision. As for colors, they're able to see all the same ones as we humans do. But because light behaves differently underwater, they have a hard time discerning red and its shades. Deep sea fish can easily see in the dark, which is pretty cool. Sharks, on the other hand, can't distinguish colors at all, but they see much clearer under the water than we do. Birds have some pretty unique ways of seeing the world. Unlike humans, birds can see ultraviolet light. This helps them differentiate between males and females of their own species, as well as better navigate in their surroundings. Also, they are very good at focusing. For example, falcons and eagles can focus on a small mouse in the field up to a distance of one mile. A pigeon can see all the tiny details. So if you ever need to find a crack in the pavement, just ask a pigeon. And by the way, it has a 340 degree field of vision, and generally their vision is considered twice as good as a human's. There, you have it. I'm envious of a pigeon. Insects have some weird vision patterns too. Flies, for example, have thousands of little eye receptors that work together to give them a big picture of what's going on around them. And get this, they see everything in slow-mo. Plus, they can see ultraviolet light. It helps them with communication. Bees have their own problems. These guys can't tell what the color red is. To them, it looks like a dark blue. How messed up is that? Now, rats. These little guys can't see red either, but that's not the weirdest part. Either of their eyes moves on its own, so they're seeing double, like all the time. It's a wonder they don't run into more walls, am I right? Cats don't see shades of red or green, but they do see brown, yellow, and blue hues like a boss. Plus, they got a wide-angle view, so they can peep more stuff on the sides than we can. There's more, though. When it's pitch black outside, cats become ninja-like and can see six times better than us. Their pupils adjust to any lighting like magic. Now let's talk about dogs. These furry friends can't see red or orange, but they do rock at blue and violet. Plus, they can differentiate 40 shades of gray. I mean, it's not 50, but still impressive. On a related note, Frogs are really picky eaters. They won't even bother with food that isn't moving. They could be surrounded by a buffet of delicious bugs, but if they don't wiggle, frogs won't even bat an eye, and they're not the most observant creatures either. If something isn't important to them, like a shadow, they won't even bother looking at it. Chameleons have eyes that can move independently of each other, so they can see everything around them without even turning their heads. They can even see two images at the same time, like a double feature movie, one in front and one behind. Pretty impressive, right? What would you do if you suddenly got 360 degree vision like a chameleon? Share in the comments. It's late night in the Central American jungle. You're out in the wild to watch birds and you hear flapping of wings. Excited, you look intently into your night vision goggles only to see a face out of your worst nightmares. Ah, eh, don't scream, you'll scare it away. It's a perfectly harmless, wrinkle-faced bat, and it isn't interested in you. These are fruit bats, and wrinkles on their faces allow them to collect fruit pieces and juice for later snacks. By the way, their Latin name, Centurocenex, was given to them for their semblance to 100-year-old humans. 
walking around a Nepali national park and deciding to wash your face in the river nearby, you freeze in terror. A crocodile is looking straight at you from no more than a few feet's distance. Then it raises its snout above the water and you exhale in relief. It's a gharial. These reptiles have long and narrow snouts that allow them to efficiently catch fish and at the same time prohibiting them from hunting any other prey. While still carnivores, gharials are pretty shy and will slither away at the sight of humans. Right now, there are no more than a thousand of these crocodilians in the whole world, so let it go. Especially if it's a girl gharial. <laughs> you dig your garden in the backyard and notice something moving on your shovel. You take a closer look and drop the tool in horror. A small creature looking like a hostile alien is scurrying away into some burrow in the ground. Eh, no worries. It's just a star-nosed mole. These critters have peculiar snouts that look like they've been blown up from within. Their eyes are small and weak, so the star on their nose helps them a lot to move around and seek food. It's always on the move, touching everything it can reach as if the tendrils were tiny fingers. Oh, you're bathing in the ocean again. Well, look to your right, there's a real tooth shark going right at you. Nah, don't panic. It's just a sand tiger shark. Neither a sand nor a tiger one, it's a vulnerable fish-eating shark that slowly swims in the seas and chases its prey from time to time. There have been no reports of it ever attacking humans. But it still has rows of sharp teeth, so don't try to touch it just in case. It may seem placid, but you don't want it to get a bite out of you, do you? Okay, from ocean to desert, you're in Australia and longing for some water. You see a likely spot and start digging the ground only to stumble upon a creature straight from the depths of neither, all covered in thorns. It eyes you suspiciously and slinks away because it's just a thorny devil. Despite its ominous name, this lizard is harmless to humans. Horn-like bumps on its skin are for protection from predators and birds of prey. The thorns are hard, but as long as you don't touch them, you're fine. Now, if you have arachnophobia, it won't calm you down. But tailless whip scorpions you might meet in North and South America, as well as Asia and Africa, are more afraid of you than you are of them. Eh, tell yourself that. These nightmarish creatures don't have stingers and won't even bite when threatened. The worst they could do, and only if you corner them, why would you do that, is prick you with their front legs, leaving tiny puncture marks on your finger. Many people even keep them as pets, and they're quite affectionate toward their owners. Yeah. If you ever stumble upon a burrow from which a hairless, big-toothed creature is speaking at you, just don't mind it and let it be. Naked mole rats are the sphinx cats among rodents. They're close relatives of mole rats, but, well, naked. And they're fascinating in their own right, too, thanks to living entirely underground. They're almost totally cold-blooded, but can conform to any temperature outside. And their flappy, wrinkled skin doesn't feel any pain at all. So pins and prickles, as well as sharp teeth, don't scare naked mole rats. You're once again lost in the jungle, this time on Madagascar. Poor you. The night has fallen, and you seek shelter. But when you think you've found a suitable tree to build a lean-to, you freeze in terror. A black, long-fingered hand appears on a tree branch right above you, and two huge yellow eyes are staring you down. Then you see a shaggy face and realize it's just a lemur. An eye-eye, more precisely. This creature is native to Madagascar and only goes out at night, so you're lucky to see it. It fulfills a role of a woodpecker in tropical forests. It knocks on tree trunks to find bugs and uses its long, wizened fingers to reach inside. Tired of being scared, you seek your way home, but your horrors aren't over yet. There's a big red and white snake across your path. It hisses and lies in wait for you to move. You know it's a coral snake, a really dangerous, venomous kind. You stop in your tracks, and only when it finally slithers away, you realize it was actually a milk snake. 
They often mimic venomous ones, not only coral snakes, to protect themselves from predators. Still, if you're not a snake expert, it's always best to stay away. Okay, this creature will infest your darkest dreams. A giant African millipede. It's big, it's glossy black, and it has hundreds of tiny crawly legs. And yet, if it had googly eyes, it could even be cute. Perhaps that's why so many people keep them as pets. That, and because they commonly live up to 10 years. Giant millipedes can't really bite. Their only defense is curling into a tight ball and secreting irritating liquid from the pores of its skin. If you dare touch it, don't rub your eyes or nose afterwards. It's quite unpleasant. Goliath Bird Eater is another popular pet creepy crawler. It isn't dangerous for humans, despite it looking like your worst nightmare. This is one of the largest spiders in the world, and as its name implies, it sometimes hunts small birds for food. But they aren't part of its regular diet. The spider prefers worms and amphibians. Make sure you don't frighten it, though. It can still bite or release hairs in self-defense. The bite is similar to a wasp sting, and hairs can cause severe irritation on your skin. But mostly, this gentle giant is just shy and will crawl away at the sight of you. Oh dear, there's another snake approaching you, and fast! You're about to turn and run when you see a hulking eight-legged form cutting into the snake's path and leaping on it. It's another arachnid, and it looks even more terrifying than the snake. It's a camel spider. Not really a spider, nor a scorpion. These creatures belong to a separate family. They became the stuff of many urban legends, but in fact, they don't even have any venom. Sure, they can bite, and their jaws are pretty powerful, but camel spiders can't do much more to a human than just bite. They hide in the sand and burrow to leap on unsuspecting lizards, invertebrates, and yes, even snakes. Poor Pete. Pete is so scared of bugs, all he wants is to find a place on Earth where he can be safe from them. After years of research and traveling, he eventually finds the place to go, Antarctica. Pete makes it there, confident that bugs wouldn't survive in the cold. Ah, little did he know that insects are on every continent of this planet. Well, not really. He was kind of right about Antarctica. It isn't home to a lot of bugs. In fact, there are only one true species of insect that calls this place home. It's a wingless midge called Belgica Antarctica. This fly is tiny, but it's still Antarctica's largest terrestrial bug. Okay, so we've established there's literally no place on Earth you can escape insects. Well, that's not really true either. You might need to learn to swim, though, as the only place that doesn't have any bugs living within is the Earth's surface covered by the ocean. But why do insects hate it here so much? No one could really come up with a definitive explanation, but some think it's because the oceans lack the plants that insects use for food and shelter. They might as well be the largest network of secret agents on the planet, as insects have ears all over the place. Most of the time, though, these ears are not on their heads. Some have ears on their wings, some on their legs, and some even on their abdomens and necks. A lot of these bugs live pretty lonely lives, but there are some of them that actually have families. Like the best beetles, for example. They can form family-like units in which both parents work to raise their young. They also have their own vocabulary and speak to each other by squeaking. Should an insect ever fall from a certain height, does it sustain any damage? Well, the subject is a bit more complex, but let's take ants, for example. They don't take any fall damage, and that's because they're so small. A lot of other bugs can technically fall from a height of miles and still be fine. The explanation has a lot to do with math and physics, which the bugs themselves have no time to study. But to put it simply, they're not nearly heavy enough to impact the surface they hit. As they fall, they don't actually gather speed, they slow down. An ant's relatively large surface area, for that tiny weight, creates a lot of drag as it moves through the air. So it ends up slowing down as it reaches the end of its flight. Speaking of ants, uh, wasn't I doing that? There are about one quadrillion of them on the planet at any given moment. 
That's about 1.4 million hands per human, calculated for a world population of 7.3 billion people. If we put it that way, it's their planet, right? It's hard to imagine a fruit fly with an astronaut helmet on. But they were indeed the first living creatures to be launched into space. That was back in 1947, when they waved goodbye to the Earth in a V-2 rocket, reached an altitude of about 68 miles in less than 200 seconds. They then returned to Earth by parachute. Not all insects are that lucky. For example, caterpillars have a total of 12 eyes but are basically blind. Their simple little eyes can only distinguish between light and dark, so they can't actually see a clear picture of what's in front of them. And no, glasses won't help if that's what you're thinking. Some insects actually put a lot of work into their uh, dating life. A good example is the stoneflies, which do push-ups to attract the ladies. Did you know butterflies taste the surroundings with their feet? Heard that right! That's because they have taste sensors on their feet that help them find food. So they stand on a leaf and give it a taste. If they figure out the plant is something that their caterpillars can eat, they place their eggs in this spot. But how do they eat since they can't bite or chew? Well, they use their long tongue, which looks more like a tube called a proboscis. It's basically a straw that helps butterflies to slurp up liquids, like nectar, for example. The ancestors of this crafty creature had lived on this planet way before the dinosaurs themselves. Fossil records show that ancient grasshoppers first came up more than 300 million years ago. Ever heard of bugs that are fans of rock music? Well, in a way, termites do, sort of, prefer this sound. Termites chew away at wood to figure out what kind of wood they have lying around. They use vibrations. Why? Because it helps them find the best source of food. If there's heavy metal or rock music playing, they can chew through the wood faster than at their regular speed. Hmm, do they slow their chewing down with Brahms or Bach? Or just go to sleep? This is one type of insect you'll surely find difficult to see. This master of disguise looks like a leaf. Throughout their existence, they managed to develop this type of camouflage so the predators miss them in plain sight. They can even rock back and forth to copy the movement made by leaves blown by the wind. Nature has its own weather forecasters, the mighty crickets. Well, they work more like a thermometer, if you like. Turns out you can manually calculate the temperature outside by counting the cricket chirps you hear in a minute and then divide it by 4. You should then add 40 to that number you get, and there you have it, an estimated temperature number in Fahrenheit. Crickets even have their own unique song, which they use to attract mates and defend their territory. Yes, music that repels and attracts at the same time. You should consider ladybugs if you're interested in free gardening services. That's because they feed on other insects, some that can actually damage your plants. They can keep fruit flies and other mites at bay. A ladybug might end up eating more than 5,000 insects in its lifetime, which adds up to about a year. Let's get into some awesome data about the busy bees. Their wings can beat 190 times per second. Now, I'll do the math for you. That's 11,400 times a minute. What a workout! Well, they do need that strength, since a single honeybee colony can produce around 220 pounds of honey each year. That's a staggering 220 jars. Hmm, it's nature's equivalent of a factory. But you'd have to teach bees to make honey. It's not in their instinct to do so. Another fascinating aspect of bees' life is that the temperature inside any beehive is always around 93 degrees, regardless of the outside weather. That's because they're really good at insulating their surroundings. Bees also have different stomachs for eating and for storing honey. It's the bee's equivalent of not doing business while you're eating. Okay, now don't jump out of your chair just yet, as you might actually enjoy some of these facts about spiders. They do help a lot with maintaining our crops free from other insects. So, if you think about it, we do have something to thank them for. 
Their eyesight is also incredible. They can see spectrums of light that we can't, like UVA and UVB light. And speaking of their superpowers, a strand of spider silk is five times stronger than a strand of steel, of the same thickness, of course. Some scientists believe that if spiders were as large as humans, certainly hope not, their web could stop objects as big as airplanes. And that spider silk? It's actually a liquid, but it does harden when exposed to air. They're also quite sneaky themselves, and have evolved to look more like ants. Why? So they can better avoid other predators and hunt ants better. Spiders don't have wings, that's for sure. But the jumping ones can hop up to 50 times their own length. Well, otherwise, I still get the heebie-jeebies when I think about spiders. How about you? You know, scorpions are interesting little Ouch. creatures. Six legs, two claws, and a powerful stinger. Now, what if humans also wore exoskeletons to protect themselves? So an exoskeleton is mainly made up of chitin, which is a complex material found in insects and reptiles. Thanks to their exoskeletons, these tiny creatures can defend themselves and perform acts of superhuman strength. If you were a scorpion exoskeleton, you'd be able to climb up any building you wanted. With massive claws in the front, it would be easy to grab hold of things and even cut through them. Might be hard to open a bag of chips, though. But at night, you'd have problems – UV rays. They wouldn't hurt you or cut through you or anything, but you'd definitely glow in the dark. Not exactly ideal for sneaking up on someone. A scorpion's tail is venomous and packs a nasty sting. You could use it to sting anyone in your way. Plus, it's long enough that you could defend yourself from a safe distance. Scorpions live all over the world in some of the harshest environments, from freezing icy landscapes to scorching hot deserts. If it freezes, a scorpion can even thaw itself out under the sun. This next creature also has two claws and six legs, but it doesn't have a stinger. It's the mighty crab. Its shell is a lot more powerful than a scorpion's, and it's surprisingly quick. So you'd be seriously powerful in one of those. The downside is you'd only be able to walk sideways. And you'd be delicious to someone like me. There are almost 5,000 species of crab all over the world, each with special skills. In a crab costume, you'd definitely be a master digger. Sure, you'd be doing it sideways, but those legs and claws can get the job done. If there were crab-inspired bodysuits, they'd most likely be made for digging. You could even work underwater. You'd be agile, strong, and you'd look awesome. Humans in ant suits would dominate any construction site. Ants live in colonies around most of the world and rely on strength in numbers. But that doesn't mean each little ant's weak or anything, just the opposite. There are actually already exoskeleton suits out there to help humans do some heavy lifting. But to use the actual strength of an ant would be a game-changer. An ant can lift around a thousand times its own weight. In a group, they can drag a bird across a field without breaking a sweat. What's even crazier is that they can carry things while they're climbing straight up a wall, or even upside down. Wow! Imagine a group of humans dragging a jet fighter up the side of the Empire State Building. There wouldn't be any need for bulldozers or cranes anymore. Just strap into an ant suit and get her done. Buildings could be inspired by those huge underground ant colonies. Ants are amazing at making tunnels. Imagine wearing a bodysuit that flies through the air like a stealth craft. If you wore a hornet suit, you'd have it made. They have a tough exoskeleton that's surprisingly light and easy to maneuver. Picture a fleet of strong flying acrobats. Oh, and don't forget the stinger. Most people think of hornets as pests, but they're not. They do a lot of good for the ecosystem, like eating up those pesky mosquitoes. Having a hornet suit would be essential for any kind of undercover work, not so much for office work. A strong aerodynamic bodysuit with a powerful stinger? Hey, sign me up! An armadillo uses keratin to make its bodysuit. You know, the stuff your hair and nails are made of? What makes it unique is that it's foldable and durable at the same time. It's made up of hexagon-shaped plates that go all over its back. When there's danger around, it can roll up into a ball. Scientists are studying how to make durable bending glass just like the armadillo's body plates. Humans wouldn't be 100% protected with this thing on, but they'd be able to withstand pretty much anything. 
You could jump out of a plane, no parachute, land on a rooftop, brush it off, roll off the edge, and land safely on a nearby car. All while being chased by tricked-out cars and helicopters. Nah, I've been streaming too many movies. Being one of the slowest animals on Earth does come with an advantage. You got a heavy shell on you 24-7 for protection. Just like armadillos, tortoise shells are made of keratin. What's sweet about its shell is that it grows with the tortoise. Crabs and other shelled animals have to keep replacing theirs as they outgrow them. Humans would be almost invincible if they wore tortoise suits, but they'd be insanely slow and draw a lot of attention. Still, if something goes down, you could just hide in your shell and wait it out. Hopping around from place to place would be pretty sweet, but what about flying? Grasshoppers can do both. They have a set of wings they tuck in behind them, which they unleash after their epic takeoff jump. Oh, and they come in all shapes and sizes, great for camouflage. Now, a grasshopper can jump around 10 inches high and 3 feet long. Uh, far? Uh, out? Well, that far. Anyway, it's all thanks to its back legs. Grasshoppers basically catapult themselves when they feel threatened or when they see something delicious. If you had a grasshopper suit, you'd be able to jump a whole football field in one go. You can forget about being stuck in traffic. It might not be the most powerful armor, but with those jumping skills and landing skills, getting your weekend shopping done would be a breeze. Or you could be the world's coolest pizza delivery person. Just imagine the tips. The biggest animal on this list doesn't really have an exoskeleton, but it does have a thick, thick skin. This massive beast is one of the most powerful mammals on Earth, and it comes with a strong horn near its nose for protection. Any guesses? Now, it might look scary, but that humongous rhino's an herbivore. It's not going to eat you. But rhinos do attack when they feel provoked, so keep your distance. Their thick skin makes them look like a tank, and it keeps them nice and warm. Now, with your rhino suit on, you'd have a monster advantage over the average human. The thick skin suit would be really useful for extreme weather conditions, cold or hot. And a horn on the top of your head would send a pretty powerful message. And it's not just beep beep. Jaws that look like antlers? Six legs? Meet the stag beetle. Its oversized jaws are used for impressing its friends and sometimes for a little wrestling. But don't worry, these fearsome jaws aren't strong enough to hurt you. A human stag beetle suit would be pretty weird if you saw one walking down the street. But who knows what people will be into in 10, 20 years? Maybe this will be the future of wrestling. Now this reptile has the toughest skin of its kind. Crocodiles are fearsome animals, virtually unchanged since the days of the dinosaurs. Our modern-day croc is still top of the food chain, with scales on its back and a very soft underbelly. Its scales are made from some of the most durable materials out there. And don't forget that powerful jaw! It can crush watermelons like chewing gum. A human croc suit would be fast, strong, but mostly limited to hanging around lakes and rivers. It'd be a great thing to be wearing during a game of hide-and-seek, though. (coughs) You're it! This last creature takes the grand prize, toughest exoskeleton ever. It's smaller than a rhino for sure. Presenting the ironclad beetle. Even the name makes people's knees weak. This beetle has interlocking wing covers that make it twice as strong as it should be. But get this, it doesn't even fly. Yeah, it doesn't need to escape from danger. Whatever you throw at it, it can't be hurt, dented, or even crushed. Not even by a car! These beetles can live up to two years, way longer than other beetles who only stick around for a couple of weeks or months. A human suit based on the ironclad beetle? Wow! That name gets me every time. It'd probably be resistant to just about any collision. Walking through moving traffic would be like strolling in the park on a warm afternoon. This suit would be perfect for deep-sea exploration since it's resistant to pressure. That'd make it excellent for outer space adventures, too. Saddleback Caterpillar's name is also quite telling. It looks like some creature from another planet with a bright green saddle over its back. And the saddle is, sadly, the only safe part of the thing to touch. The spines you see all over the rest of its body are sharp and highly poisonous. If you want to give it a friendly tap on the back, make sure you don't touch anything else. Well, well, we have a titan beetle next. Meet the largest beetle in the whole world. It can grow as long as your entire palm, complete with fingers. 
Seeing one in the wild can be a shocking experience, especially if it flies right in your face. But don't fret. Thankfully, this giant is placid and won't bite you if you don't mean it harm. Still, if you make it angry, never let its mandibles touch you. The bug will hiss and bite, and what such snap can crack a pencil in half? What's interesting, an adult titan beetle doesn't feed at all. It doesn't need food to survive. As a larva, it gets enough energy to keep it well-nourished even when grown up. Ooh, I'd love that ability. An even more menacing-looking bug is a giant weeda. Living in New Zealand, these cricket-like creatures look like someone forgot to lock the portal to the infernal. A massive, beefy body with six thorny legs, long alien-looking antennae, and big mandibles that just might cut steel. Well, in fact, these giant insects are quite peaceful and won't bite unless provoked. And even if they do, it's not as bad as you might think. There are videos with Wheatas biting hands of people holding them and doing no harm at all. So don't let it scare you, even though such an insect might weigh more than a full-fledged sparrow. Atlas moths look like they have three heads, two of which are serpents. These pretty nocturnal flyers have strange shapes on the tips of their wings that look like snake heads. This seems to be their mode of defense from predators. And that's also why they're sometimes called cobra moths. In Southeast Asia and India, where they normally dwell, atlas moths are often found on butterfly farms producing silk. And that's some sight. The wingspan of one such moth can reach 10 inches. That's larger than your hand. Peacock spiders are perhaps the cutest arachnids in the world, second maybe only to their jumping cousins. They're so tiny, you probably wouldn't even notice one scrambling through your kitchen. But if you get a chance to take a closer look, do it. Peacock spiders are beautiful. They have large beady eyes, a shiny blue and red coat, and cute fuzz on their body and legs. And their mating dance is something else entirely. Too bad they only live in Australia. Another moth on the list, the hummingbird moth. Remember the atlas one, how huge it was? Well, this one's as big as a hummingbird and holds much more resemblance to its namesake than that. The speed at which it flutters its wings, the long tongue to drink flower nectar, and even the sound it makes when flying, all of it makes you wonder if it's really a moth after all. Of course, the fuzzy critter is absolutely safe, and you should consider yourself lucky if you ever see one. Longhorned orb weaver spider is one of the most unusual arachnids in the world. It's just your regular spider in all respects, but for some reason, it boasts two long curved horns on its back. The back itself is bright orange to ward off predators. Red means danger. But scientists are still unsure why this spider needs those prongs. So there's a web of mystery for you. The soft rustling of leaves underneath, a pile of them slightly moving, and a big mighty horn shows up. It's the Hercules beetle, one of the largest beetles on the planet. Almost half of its size comes from that horn on its head. Thanks to this wonderful appendage, you know exactly it's a male. Females don't have it at all. Yet the name comes not only from the horn, but from the amazing ability of this giant to haul extremely heavy loads. Its strength is second only to dung beetles. A Hercules can carry as much as 850 times its own weight. If you ever see a bug with five heads wearing a pointy cap, no, you're not on another planet. It's a Brazilian tree hopper. Straight from a sci-fi movie and onto your screens here, this insect is a real mystery. It's small and secretive, and much is still unknown about it. No one knows why exactly the tree hoppers have these fuzzy balls on their heads. But they've only got one head after all. <laughs> that much is certain. Going for a swim in a freshwater pond somewhere in the African tropics. Watch your toes. You can get a giant water bug hunting them. It's a predatory bug and the largest of its kind. With those huge pincers, it's no wonder it's commonly known as an alligator flea and a toe biter. The bite of this water-dwelling monster is really quite powerful. It grabs its prey with the front legs and then slowly munches on it. And when I say it's a predator, I mean it. Giant water bugs' favorite food is fish and amphibians. 
Despite their name, scorpion flies aren't related to scorpions. They get this moniker thanks to their tails, which look a lot like the notorious arachnids. Seeing a flying scorpion is a daunting sight at best, but fear not, these critters are small and gentle, and they can't even bite you. Only the males have such a tail, and they use it to attract females. Hey! What do you imagine when you hear the words walking stick? Certainly not a bug, but that's exactly what it is. Look at this twig and try to guess. Is there something alive on it or not? Yes and no. This twig is not a twig at all. It is a walking stick. These insects have developed a fascinating camouflage. They're long and unassuming, able to stay still for hours on end, which makes them look like dry twigs. But as soon as you touch one, it scrambles away on its gangly legs. Thanks to their appearance, predatory birds often miss walking sticks in the dense foliage. And their Australian kin give off a pleasant scent, something like peanut butter. Ooh, yum! So, we all know that Mother Nature is wise. If she blesses some creature with a particular body part, it should make perfect sense, right? Well, yeah, but still, some wildlife shots make you wonder if evolution has gone the wrong way. Snakes' natural design allows them to swallow a whole mouse. But in some cases, this cool ability can turn against them. Yes, snakes can actually swallow themselves. Scientists believe that they mostly do this because of stress, captivity, temperature regulation, hunger, or illness. The snake is pretty helpless in this situation, you can tell. If it doesn't get help in time, digestive juices may begin to corrode the swallow tail. So if you ever catch your pet snake doing this, try to stop it. Or take it to the vet. Okay, but what about the fangs, I hear you ask? Does a venomous snake have immunity to its own venom? Well, if the snake digests it, it will be okay. It's because protein is a primary component in venom. And besides, the venom is excreted by the gland in the snake's mouth. So no matter whom the snake bites, chances are that it's going to drink a bit. So the only way a snake can actually suffer from its own venom is by biting itself straight into the blood vessel. In this case, it'll experience the same reaction as any other animal. Now, think you're having a bad hair day? Hey, check this guy out. Chris was an Australian merino ram who became a celebrity in 2015 after being discovered in the wild. Farmers shorn him and gained nearly 90 pounds of wool. When the animal was found, he carried over five years' worth of fleece on his body. But Chris belonged to the domestic sheep breed that needs to be shorn regularly. Otherwise, the animal is at great risk of injury and infection. So the lives of these cuties depend directly on going to the hairdresser. Shall we talk about horns? Cattle, goats, and many other species proudly wear this fancy headdress not only for fashion, but also as a weapon for brutal battles. If you ask this bighorn sheep ram directly how old he is, you'll probably hear something like, bah. But if you want to get a more precise answer, you can count the number of rings on his horns. The biggest and the darkest ring usually marks the fourth birthday, when the ram matures enough for mating. Although animal horns may look very tough, in fact, most of them are made of keratin. It's the same protein that builds human hair and nails. Horns never stop growing as the animal ages, just like our own hair. And eventually, they can curl into really extravagant shapes, making these weapons turn against their owners. This is what a Wilshire sheep horn looks like when it's young. But as the years go by, the horns typically curl in front of its face. And while most grow out harmlessly, the inward-growing horns can end up dangerously close to the sheep's head. Like this ram who's having bad luck, to say the least. Its horn has slowly grown into its own skull, and eventually, well, it didn't end well for the sheep. Of course, this would hardly have happened on a farm because people would have made a preventive horn cut. But unfortunately, in the wild, animals cannot use hairdresser services. That's why they use rocks and branches to rub and grind away at their horns to keep them safe, just like humans trim their nails. Faulty genetics is not the only reason for the horn distortion. You see, when males of the species want to fight for dominance, they begin to butt heads to show each other who's the alpha male here. Mm -hmm. 
These battles can break horn plates, making them grow at weird and dangerous angles. The fancier the original shape of the horns is, the more problems their fracture may cause. This poor African kudu is a bright example. Fortunately, in some cases, unlimited body part growth can be good for the animal. Just take a look at these adorable smiles. If you happen to break off your own molar tooth, your dentist would probably say it's irreversible and offer a replacement. But if an alpaca breaks its front teeth, all it has to do is wait a bit. Although these animals don't have upper teeth, their lower teeth constantly grow throughout their lifetime. And they might look pretty creepy when they get too long. That's why some farmers prefer trimming them from time to time. Just like pet owners cut the nails of their cats or dogs. Now llamas look so similar to alpacas that many people confuse these two species. But the significant difference between them is that llamas' front teeth are encased in enamel. That's why, unlike alpacas, they don't possess the superpower of limited growth. Eh, too bad. Unlike the keratin horns, deer antlers are made entirely of bone. Typically, only male deers, called stags, grow antlers. Very rarely, females can grow them too due to a serious hormone imbalance. This is a deer equivalent of a beard on a human female that sometimes can appear due to various diseases. Adult deers grow and shed their antlers annually, which coincides with the breeding season. At first, their antlers are covered in velvet, a protective skin with blood vessels. But once the antler is fully developed, the deer gets rid of the velvet, just like snakes shed their skin. Although this process doesn't harm the deer, it may look pretty spooky. Once the brand new antlers are ready, stags begin to fight with other males over the ladies' attention. Usually stags barely eat or sleep during this competition. And if you ever question whether the antlers of two deers can get locked together, the answer is yes. Every stag is risking ending up stuck with his own rival instead of having a romantic night out with a female deer. Bummer. Moreover, all the traumas that the deer gets during the mating season can influence further antler growth if specific nerves get damaged. Just like horns, antlers can develop at distorted angles because of genetic failures. Some mutations can even make them grow monstrously large. This unlucky deer can barely move his head without losing balance. Also, if a deer breaks one of its legs, its body can speed up the healing by sacrificing the bone and blood material from one of the antlers. And thus, this antler will get thinner and weaker. And speaking of facial extensions, we cannot skip the tusks. Please meet Babarusa from Indonesia. This ancient boar first emerged over 35,000 years ago. It's easy to confuse these big tusks with horns, but they are actually upper canines. They tend to pierce through the skin of the boar's face as it matures. Scientists believe that these intimidating tusks have evolved as a tool to protect eyes and throat while fighting with other males during mating season. But this design doesn't seem very thoughtful. If a male boar doesn't grind his tusks regularly, they can end up curling back into his own skull, which can blind him or even worse. Now, what if I told you that hoofs can grow out of control just like horns and antlers? It took evolution millions of years to turn the middle toe of the animal's foot bone into the hoof. And just like toenails, they tend to grow and curl into creepy shapes if they aren't cut regularly. When donkeys or horses don't have a chance to wear down their hooves naturally by walking on hard surfaces, they tend to overgrow. This makes the animals walk on the balls of their feet and overstretch the tendons, which may result in pain and bone loss. And eventually, they can lose the ability to walk at all. So if you ever come across a horse with curly hooves, consider calling the experts to give it an emergency manicure. Perhaps one of the most obvious questions regarding the undersea world is, can a fish drown in the water? Yup, it can. Although gills are an amazing gift of nature, there are still many factors that may deprive a fish of healthy breathing. When the oxygen level in the water is too low, fish begin to suffocate. But it happens very rarely in the wild. Oxygen deficit usually appears in aquariums that are not washed and replenished often enough. Also, parasites, diseases, and an overall imbalance in water components can cause the fish to drown. 
And on that note, I need to hoof it on out of here. See you next time.